Hey guys, so this video is going to be mostly about bevel order, but we're also going to play around with bevels in general here. And this is kind of important when you're modeling things. So now we're going to be doing this in 3.6. Of course, Blender 4, 4.1 came out, but they're not really that good. I, I think they're probably one of the worst versions of Blender that came out. So, you know, get the LTS version, stick with this thing, and don't bother with uh, with those. And so here's what I want to get into, though. When you do a bevel on a cube, you hit Control-B and you bevel an edge, right? Um you're going to get this kind of result and then if you bevel this one now you get this result okay so depending on which edges you bevel first you get different results this is the one we get we get with that now let's go back if we went the other way with this we would get a bevel here and then a bevel here you alt click that edge you can do that right and so this is going to look like so all right now let's go ahead and do this all three at the same time we get this kind of a corner here now, n none of these are necessarily better than one or the other, but a lot of times when you're working on a model, you'll find that you need to do them in one of those three fashions there, in one of those orders, um, in order to get the kind of edges that you need to uh, create good shading and whatnot. Not a big deal, but there's another little cool little secret in here, is that when you're doing these bevels, right, let me just pull these out a little bit. Uh, if we were to take this edge here, for example, and bevel it, and we hit M a few times, we'll actually change the bevel type the way it bevels so it's changing the width type and usually it's by default at offset I like to use width personally uh, but you can definitely uh, hit M a few times and you'll use percentage so percentage can be quite good but it gets a little bit better when you start adding in some holding edges or uh, doing some knife cuts so we're gonna go to the top view hold alt while orbiting Alt Z if you want and I want to just go ahead and add in uh, a knife cut I can do KC and A I can knife cut like so or I could do a loop cut and control R. And so we could take these edges here, use a move tool for this, uh, and just start to line them up as, as needed here uh, to the grid behind it, right? So Alt Z to get to that, see that grid anyways. All right. So by default, when you bevel, you'll get something kind of like that. Pretty predictable. However, if you had a loop cut down the middle and we took this whole section here, and yeah, let's scale it out. And evenly in all directions. So we press S and we scale it. And we scale it on Y so that it goes out equally in this manner, right? We'll get this kind of result, okay? Now, when we bevel this, what we see happen is we get this result, all right? Maybe this is what you want, maybe it's not. A lot of times it's not going to be what you want. However, if you were to switch that to percentage, you'll see it actually be it bevels like this, all right? So it bevels a little bit differently, it gives you a different kind of a corner here. I guess I didn't line those up entirely correct though. So let's go ahead and try fixing that by doing, well, there's a couple different things you could do here. You could do SY0 and flatten it out and remove it to where it goes. Don't remove, but move it. And then uh, S and X0, or you can use the machine tools add-on and just use Alt-A and Align on top or Align to the right. And now we just make sure we got them placed exactly where we need them. And so when we do this bevel now, you'll see we can use those. Press M a few times. We can get this kind of a result here. This can be kind of important because this is the way you want your bevels to go a lot of times. Uh, matter of fact, when you're working with something a little bit different, let's say we do a plane real quick. We'll turn this into a triangle, okay? So we just press M, merge it, center. Uh, let's say we have a triangle like this, right? And let's uh, push it around into some kind of odd shape. All right? Now, normally when you're doing a bevel and you're drawing, right? Or maybe you're in a CAD software, it'll do like a circle in this area and it'll bevel to that circle okay we don't have that here in blender so watch what happens here i'm going to create a curve we'll do a circle it could be it should be very large right now or maybe it's not in the right spot all right anyways curve circle we can use this as a guide let's place it right here okay and we'll place one over here and we'll place one over here so when we grab a vertex and we hit Control b and we can hit V now, and we can bevel the vertex. And you can see we can do that number like that. All right, so a lot of times this will still work out quite well in a lot of corners, not a big issue. Uh, certain other corners may not work out too well. In this case, we'll see what we can get going on here. Okay, not too bad, but we really want these like uh, vertices to stop here near the center point going across. And you can see this doesn't quite line up. So you'll need to change the uh, shape here as well. A lot of times for things like this and that's just going to give you a little bit better result but you have to have these as a little place marker just to make sure you're doing it about correct and uh but once you've done that you know you could take something like this later on perhaps 
duplicate it, convert it to a mesh. Uh, press A, F, extrude it, create a cylinder out of it, scale it down. Okay, so if we needed little holes in these corners, perhaps, uh, we could definitely run this out and about now and get them all lined up just exactly how we want them. And try to get them as perfect as possible because we're just eyeballing it here. Uh, but eventually we can do that, right? So now we can maybe extrude this. Our normals are backwards. If you don't see that, you need to turn back face colon on. A, Alt, N, flip the normals. Now you can start using these things as boolean cutters, perhaps, if you wanted to. So I'll be using hard ops with that. But um, you can certainly use the bull tools add-on. And so we get a nice little shape out of that, right? Without um, too much effort, anyways. It's not too bad. And so whenever we need something else, for example, though, like we, we want to create another plane, we want to do another like triangle within this area. You can see where this can kind of become a little bit of a problem, like we have to start lining things up again. And uh, so it's one of those downsides that I think the uh, vertex bevels could would be a little bit nicer if they could somehow fix that so that it always does or behaves exactly how you anticipate it to be doing a bevel in a corner like that. But whatever the case, it does not. So you'll have to just do it manually, unfortunately. So if you do something like a trapezoid here, you get the idea. We can start to uh, go through these corners. And these ones we should be able to bevel as a vertex, no problem, like this. And maybe change that shape profile back to 0.5. Or you try something else, perhaps, maybe like a 0.7 or something like that. Use a solidify modifier if you want. And now you can just subtract that from there. All right. And so all in all, that's just kind of what I want to talk about when doing bevels. I think it's kind of important to recognize that this is possible, at least, to uh, create these kinds of shapes with a, a little bit more thought put into it, as opposed to um, just you know getting what you get when you start a, a vertex bevel or when you start a bevel on a corner. This can be quite useful, and especially when you're doing like really crazy weird shapes as well, because if you you know you're starting to do some things like this and you know, you bevel this over here, perhaps. Like, like, let's take this up, actually. And then, say we're beveling this over here. You can see that's just like with uh, offset or with bevel, you'll get something like that. But if you use that percentage, you get some really cool shapes out of it, right? So that could be quite useful to you. And I just wanted to talk about it in this one for the most part. So now, hopefully, you can put it to use, all right? I'll check you out in the next video. Hope you enjoyed. Take care, all right?